Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Morning Musings. Happy Friday morning to you. I hope you've had a fantastic week, and I do appreciate you being with me. Uh, this is uh, this is our continuation of our refutation of the book by Mr. Lance Conley, the book entitled Hope Resurrected. We've been focusing on his doctrine of the election, specifically Romans chapter 11, 25 to 27, uh, which uh, Mr. Conley believes is just foundational for his view that election ends at the second coming. He says there's no more preaching, no more evangelism, no more sin, etc., uh, no more salvation after the second coming. Well, I've already falsified that in a number of different ways. But I, I have shared with you how, how Mr. Conley has actually started changing his position. Uh, in the book, on several different pages, and for time consideration, I'm not going to go through uh, the numerous pages in which he iterates this, but I want to share with you how he has flip-flopped back and forth since I pointed out that Paul in Romans chapter 11, 25 to 27, was anticipating the fulfillment of Isaiah 27 and Isaiah 59. Now, in correspondence, this month, May of 2020, beginning on the 25th and following, Mr. Conley said things like, well, if you want to join Isaiah 27 and Isaiah 59, that's your business. Uh, no, I'm just accepting what Paul did. Virtually all scholars agree that Paul was anticipating the fulfillment of both Isaiah 27 and Isaiah 59. So I, I guess I would respond then to say, well, Mr. Conley, if you want to divorce Isaiah 27 from Isaiah 59, then how are you going to divorce them from Romans chapter 11? That's your business but you would be wrong. Furthermore, when I pointed out and asked the question, who is Israel, that Paul said, all Israel shall be saved. It is my position that it is the righteous remnant. Beginning back in Romans chapter 9, Paul talked about the salvation of the righteous remnant. Now, take note of the fact that Paul said in Romans chapter 9, verse 28, that the Lord promised that bringing the consummation of Israel's history in the salvation of the righteous remnant, a short work will the Lord make on the earth. He will cut it short in righteousness. So, the salvation of all Israel, of Romans chapter 11, 25 to 27, is the consummation of the salvation of the righteous remnant. The salvation of the righteous remnant was taking place in the first century, and Paul said the consummation of the salvation of the righteous remnant would not be a long, protracted, drawn-out event. Now, what that means is that the coming of the Lord for the salvation of, quote, all Israel, i.e., the righteous remnant, would not be a long, drawn-out process, i.e., 2,000 years. So when I pointed out that Paul was talking about old, old covenant Israel here. Paul said, no, Israel is the church. Well, that's very problematic in Romans 11, 25 to 27, or Romans chapter 11. Israel in Romans chapter 11 had been cut off. Romans 11, 15 and following. R Israel in Romans chapter 11 was in a state of unbelief. Israel, in Romans chapter 11, was partially blinded. Romans 11, 25. Israel, in Romans chapter 11, verse 28 and following, were the enemies of the gospel when Paul wrote. And yet, here is Mr. Conley claiming, yes, Israel is the church. And uh, when I cornered him on that, pointing out and asking him, well, okay, so it was the church that was blind when Paul wrote. He, he responded, 
No, the faithful are not blind. Well, you see, Paul was not talking about the salvation of the, the future salvation of the rem, remnant as the unfaithful. They were at the time that he wrote, but he was anticipating that they would be converted. But Paul's discussion is not talking about Israel at the time being some other entity other than the entity that was blind. They were not faithful when Paul wrote. They were blind. They had been cut off. They were enemies. And so I asked, so it was the church that had been cut off so that the Gentiles might come in, right? And he goes, no, there's a difference between faithful and unfaithful Christian uh, Israel. Well, whoever denied that? It was unfaithful Christian, uh, saint, <laughs> unfaithful Israel that Paul was anticipating would be saved at the day of the Lord through their conversion. Not a miraculous type of a conversion, but that's another issue. And I posed, so it was the church that was in a state of hardness of heart, right? And he says, no, the unfaithful. Those in the church are not unfaithful to God. Do you see what Mr. Conley was doing? He was shifting the focus from Israel, the Israel that was hardened, that was blind, that was unbelieving, that had been cut off. And now that he's just simply talking about the unfaithful. No, Paul is talking about Israel that did not believe. Israel that was hardened. Israel that had been cut off. So if you say, as Mr. Conley does, Israel is the church. You cannot go to Romans chapter 11, 25 to 27, and arbitrarily, isogetically, change the discussion or the identity of Israel, the Israel that was partially blinded to being old covenant Israel to all of a sudden when all Israel shall be saved, oh, that's the church. No, Paul is talking about the consummation of Israel's history. And of course, here's the bottom line. And oh, by the way, uh, I, I've got to point this out. Uh, Mr. Conley, in an earlier exchange that he and I had on Facebook, he confirms that Paul is talking about Old Covenant Israel, and he, say, he quotes verse 12, the riches of the world of the Gentiles is the salvation brought to them by and in Christ. That's Conley's statement. Origen says of this, quote, as long as Israel persists in unbelief, the fullness of the Lord's portion will not be said to be completed. Now, who did Origen, that Conley is quoting with approval, who did Conley say was in a state of unbelief when Paul wrote? Was it the church as Israel? Clearly not. But then Origen says, indeed, there will be a conversion for them. Who's, who's that? Israel, who was in unbelief when Paul wrote, at the end of the age. So does Mr. Conley accept Origen, whom he quoted, with approval or not. Then he cites Chrysostom, and he says Chrysostom echoes the same sentiment. Same sentiment as who? Origen. When he says, quote, when the fullness of the Gentiles shall have come in, all Israel shall be saved at the time of the second coming and the end of the world. Now, Mr. Connolly will undoubtedly say, well, I agree that Israel will be saved at the second coming and the end of the, end of the world. The question is the identity of Israel. On the one hand, you say you agree with Origen, but Origen says that was Old Covenant Israel, and currently then in a state of unbelief, but <clears throat> he affirmed a yet future conversion of Israel, national ethnic Israel at the end of time. So, does Mr. Conley believe that? Well, no, he tells us Israel is the church. That is not what Origen taught. It is not what Chrysostom taught. Now, being as inconsistent as the early writers were, they may have actually said in different places something different from what they said here, 
but it doesn't change what they said here. So let's summarize what we have seen. <clears throat> Mr. Conley says that Romans chapter 11, 25 to 27, speaks of the end of election at the second coming and the end of the current age. I have shown you repeatedly that Paul was anticipating the salvation of Israel, the salvation of the Israel that had been cut off, the salvation of Israel that was in a state of unbelief, the salvation of the Israel that was blinded, partially blinded at the time, the salvation of the Israel that was at the time Paul wrote, the enemy of the gospel of Christ. Now, I'm sorry you can't make that the church without violating and without perverting the text. Point number two, Paul was anticipating the salvation of that Israel, the partially blinded Israel, the cut off Israel, at the time of the fulfillment of Isaiah 27 and Isaiah 59. Oh, by the way, also in fulfillment of Isaiah 69, which I haven't discussed, but wow, what a text. But Isaiah 27 foretold the salvation of Israel, the taking away of her sin, when the fortified city would be destroyed, when the altar would be turned to chalk stone, when the people whom the Lord had created would no longer have mercy. Now, I have asked Mr. Conley, who is that? By the way, I asked Sam Frost in our debate last night, to deal with that text, and he did not say one single word about Isaiah 27, 9 and following. So here is Isaiah that foretold the time of Israel's salvation at the time of Israel's destruction. In other words, it's the salvation of the remnant, just like Romans 11. Isaiah 59. Now remember, Paul quotes from Isaiah 27 and 59, so it's not Preston that's joining them in some arbitrary, capricious, unwarranted way. It's Paul, the inspired apostle. It is Mr. Conley that wants to divorce the two without any justification whatsoever. Paul says that Israel would be saved at the coming of the Lord. Isaiah 59 says that coming of the Lord would be the coming of the Lord in judgment of Israel for shedding innocent blood. When did Jesus say the judgment of Israel for shedding innocent blood was going to take place? Read Matthew 23, 29 and following. Upon you, that's the Jews of his generation, will come all of the righteous blood of all of the righteous, from righteous Abel unto Zacharias, whom you slew between the temple and the altar, upon Israel. It's not coming upon America. It's not coming on South America. It's not coming on Russia. Coming on Israel. And it came. Even Mr. Conley just the other day on Facebook said, judgment fell on Israel in A.D. 70 for killing the prophets. For killing Jesus. Well, thank you. So, we have Isaiah 27 and Isaiah 59, both of which predicted the salvation of Israel, quote, all Israel, which is the righteous remnant of Israel, at the time of the judgment of Israel for shedding innocent blood. Point number three, and in closing. Isaiah 59 that said that salvation would come in fulfillment of God's covenant with them. So here is God's promise to save Old Covenant Israel in fulfillment of His Old Covenant promise to save them. That's what, that's what Isaiah 59 is, isn't it? Is, it? is it not an Old Covenant promise? So if Isaiah 59 is not fulfilled, if Romans 11 is not fulfilled, then Old Covenant Israel remains God's covenant people. And by the way, the citation from Chrysostom that says Israel will be saved at the end of the uh, end of the age at the end of time demands that old covenant Israel remains God's covenant people just like the citation from Chrysostom 
So Mr. Conley's eschatology demands, number one, that old covenant Israel, Israel after the flesh, remains God's covenant people because God's old covenant promise to save her is still valid according to Mr. Conley. So, if God's old covenant promise to old covenant Israel is still valid, that means the old covenant is valid and the new covenant is valid. We thus have two covenants at the same time, which Mr. Conley says is not possible. Mr. Conley says the old covenant, the law of Moses, passed away at the cross. Well, if the law of Moses, if the old covenant passed away at the cross, then guess what? Romans 11 was fulfilled at that time, but Mr. Connolly rejects that. He has to find another time while the law of Moses, the old covenant, was still in effect in order to get Romans 11 fulfilled. He can't do that. And thus, Mr. Connolly's entire doctrine of the election, which underpins his doctrine of the resurrection, his doctrine of the coming of the Lord, his doctrine of the end of the age, in every single passage that he examines in this lengthy book, the underlying foundation and the supporting pillars of his, of his eschatology are false. His entire book, therefore, is false. Thank you so much for joining me for this morning's Morning Musings. Look, if you want an extended discussion of Romans chapter 11, 25 to 27, go to my website, donkpreston.com, bibleprophecy.com, and order the book, Elijah Has Come, A Solution to Romans 11, 25 to 27. I demonstrate in that book that what Paul was anticipating in Romans 11 was not just the fulfillment of, of Isaiah 27 and Isaiah 59. He was anticipating the fulfillment of the ministry and the message of John the baptizer as Elijah, and John's mission and message was to call Israel to obedience to the law of Moses, Malachi chapter 4, verse 4. You need to get a copy of that book. So go to my website, order the book, send me a note when you do that said, Don, I saw your offer on YouTube or Facebook, and I'll refund your shipping. Okay, well, look, I've taken a lot of time this morning, so thanks for joining me. Have a safe weekend. Lord willing, I'll see you Monday.